Mikasalmi started his career in the music industry, but switched to technology to found Atom Films, which he sold to Viacom in 2006. He now sits on several boards, including INSEAD, and was recently CEO of Creative Live and e-learning company. So early on in your career, Mika, you were, you were running the IT system for a music company, and you somehow managed to discover and sign the band, the Nine Inch Nails. How, how did that happen? Uh, so I tried to, so basically I, I developed a relationship with the band. They were in, they're from Cleveland, we were in New York, and I uh, got uh, the materials and I tried to um, give it to my boss, the head of the company, and I said we should sign this band. He listened to it and said he hated it. Uh, and uh, then, I, then what I did was I played it for the whole office. We had a, kind of an open office. I played in a system for everyone in the office and convinced everyone in the office that they were terrific. And so then we all uh, we did that. Plus, I did a little analysis on what styles of music uh, have become in uh, popular music over time, and how things on the fringe become popular over time. And so I did this little analysis for him, saying that this is the next type of music that's going to become popular. So we should sign it. And then I convinced him. After we we had signed it, I helped him sign the band. He basically said, "Go back to your regular job." And I thought I was going to become an A and R person, look for new artists. And then I I promptly quit. I got mad at him and I basically told him to, flip, I flipped him off and I said, I'm, I'm out of here. I was an impetuous little 20, 22 year old. I was just like, forget it, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, so you came to INSEAD in 1992 and then you went back into the music industry for, for EMI and Sony. What were you looking for during that period? Well, so I think um, I was looking in within the music industry for a job with some real kind of meat to it. And my, my job in France didn't have it. And so then I had, a pretty good job at Sony, but that same time when I was working in New York for Sony, um, this thing called the uh, the internet hit in '94, and it was the the Mosaic browser. I got it on my computer. I I, I forced it onto my computer because they wouldn't let me install software. But I tried this thing, and I was just like, "Wow, this is really amazing. This is what I should be doing." Uh, and I also at the same time I was getting frustrated with the music business. I was kind of a mid-level executive or whatever and and I didn't really respect any of the senior people because I thought they were they were com very unprofessional and very unpleasant to be honest I didn't like the I didn't like the people in the music industry very much and so I said I have to get out of here and I set a goal at the age of 32 to get out out and I, I think I left at the age of 30 so I left two years earlier than I thought I would um, and I just but it was mainly it was driven by this exciting new thing which was the internet and so I, I pursued that and I moved to Seattle uh, to take a job with real networks which my first job there actually was working with the music industry there. So they needed someone who'd be, who knew the music industry. So ironically, I still had to work with these people, uh, but in a different, different way though. How did you come up with the idea of starting your own company? So when I joined Real Networks, it was only 31 people. So it was a pretty small company. And so I saw, I saw the, 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 the startings of a company. It had been, I think, around for maybe a year, year and a half before I started. And then I had met some people in Seattle or in via some friends who were starting companies. And so I saw the process very close hand, how it worked. And it wasn't so frightening at all once I saw how it worked. And so then I, I left Real Networks with a distinct idea of starting my company, Adam Films, because it was an idea I had still lived in Paris around short form videos. What was your vision for Atom Films? I, I, I actually had hoped that uh, Atom was gonna become uh, like almost like a virgin type brand where it was multiple things, it was Atom, Films, Adam Music, Adam Games. It was just going to be this umbrella. So I, I, I had a kind of a dream of it being kind of my, my lifelong kind of thing I was going to build. Uh, the reality was that once you have investors and all kinds of things happen, you, you realize it's, it's not really fully yours and it's, it's hard to actually realize that vision. At some point, some kind of, uh, whether it be economic or just personal kind of ambition, realities kind of take hold and you, and you, you, you change that. So I didn't get as far as I wanted with it. You sold the company very successfully to Viacom. Were you happy to sell? Oh, absolutely. No, it's, I'm, I was very happy to sell at the time. I'm saying originally I had this bigger idea, but I said over time it was like, yeah, well, you know, I, it's, you know, it's, it's time to move on here potentially. So, uh, and it was, it was a rough road. So we went, you know, at one point I laid everybody off in the entire company. At one point we were on our knees. So we, 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 we it, it wasn't, it wasn't like this smooth you know, rock it up and then cash out and go. It was, it was incredibly difficult. You stayed with Viacom in a very senior role. Was it strange to switch back to being an employee? You no, know, I think similarly what I had seen, um, I'd been close enough, whether it be at Sony or 
even at Getty, we had about we had a few hundred, five, six hundred employees, and it goes to a thousand. And a new a friend of mine was uh, um, he founded Expedia and was running. He had like many thousands of employees. I saw how it was being managed, and so the, the scaling of something did not frighten me. I, I, I realized that there's as long as you have the right kind of processes in place, um, it's 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 totally manageable. Do you think it's important to have friends doing the same thing or wanting to do the same thing? I think my kind of my peer group, I would say, uh, has been uh, both inspiring and 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 kind of a and helpful to my to my career because they've been in a similar place than I have. I would say actually going back, that was the most kind of the most important thing about INSEAD to me was that there are all these uh, people that were in a similar situation than I was actually. We were about similar age, similar ambitions. We were from all over the world, but we we had this moment where everyone was trying, it was in a transition moment, trying to figure out their next thing. You're now on your at least second career in technology. What what happens to experienced people in, in a field where careers move so fast? Well, I think what's interesting about Silicon Valley is that uh, the there isn't really a brain drain when people get older. People stay involved in some way, maybe as investors or advisors or CEOs. They, they, they stay in the, the business, whereas I remember very well uh, meeting some people from uh, from Vivendi from France about when I was working at I had sold Adam and I was working at Viacom and they looked at me they some senior executives I go why didn't you retire what are you doing working you know and I was just like well I don't have it's not like I have, I have that much money or something to retire but I was also like retire like I, I wanted to keep doing stuff so technology uh, is becoming an incredibly popular career choice for lots of people especially from business schools. What kind of people suit technology as a career? I think uh, it's people who are comfortable with risk and uncertainty. They are, the technology industry, it's, it's, you may think you've picked the winner, whether it be your own company or someone you're gonna work for, and it may be a bust. And it's uh, uh, the classic also is you hear people say that uh, it's, it's a roller coaster working at a, a startup or a technology company, and, and it's, it, you literally will have the, the highest high and the lowest low within the same day, sometimes within the same hour. And there's a, there's a, there's a joke that goes around that like if, if, you've had the, if you've had good news during the day, you should just go home right away because the bad news is coming pretty soon. Uh, and it, it's that kind of up and down life, and so you have to be very comfortable with that kind of risk and uncertainty. That, and and it's, it's, I think the, the, the danger is that people read so many stories now, the press is full of stories, all these success stories. It seems like there's a lot of success stories and people are making lots of money and they're, they're in the press and they're like celebrities in a way. But just such a, such a small sliver of, of, the, of what's going on out there. I, I, I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and the ones that are successful or ones that actually make it through are the ones just have the, the deep passion for what they're doing. Less about that kind of uh, veneer of, of being a celebrity or, or being wealthy or something because that doesn't happen actually. It's very rare that happens.